McCaffrey returning to action in a big way. However, Patrick Mahomes added to what shaping up to be another MVP season with his four touchdowns. He's the fastest quarterback to 100 touchdowns in NFL history. The Steelers and Chiefs appear to have separated themselves in the AFC and are the only two eight-win teams in the NFL. The Chiefs are averaging more points per game on offense. Both defenses have been playing well, allowing just over 20 points per game. Adam, let's just quickly start with Ben because he did leave the game and he came back, but he tweaked his knee. How is he? How many times have you seen Ben Roethlisberger go down? and come back a lot he almost always comes back and he came back yesterday and as you mentioned Susie he played better spoke to one person earlier today who told me that if Ben Roethlisberger was able to come back and play that way in the second half he fully expected him to play this Sunday against the Cincinnati Bengals all right so let's talk about Steelers Chiefs based on what you saw yesterday which team are you trusting most I mean, the Pittsburgh Steelers record shows by them being undefeated that they are the best team in football. But after yesterday's performance, going down to Dallas with, what, third, fourth, fifth string quarterback, and I think Gilbert had a great performance. No disrespect to Gilbert. I think he had a great performance and he could take Dallas in that division. But I think that the Kansas City Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes being able to average 31 points a game, I think if the Pittsburgh Steelers are able to lose Big Ben, I don't know where they were going to go from there, but I like what the Kansas City Chiefs, too many weapons in Kansas City. Well, I, I like the, Kansas City the right Chiefs now. Chiefs lost yeah, I, Patrick Mahomes. Right. I, I <laughs> no, think, the offense, I think the offense, the scheme of the offense with Eric Bieniemy and Andy Reid can make up for all those weapons in Kansas City. I don't think they could do that. Okay. In I mean, just look at the, the, the Arizona-Miami game. There are so many yards for quarterbacks to go mm -hmm. get. Free, easy yards, and in these big games, playoff-type atmospheres, I think the quarterback that can go throw it with anybody, so Patrick can throw it with anybody and with Ben, but he can go get those yards in those key moments in those big games that I think is the differentiating factor when you talk about Steelers versus Chiefs, it's the quarterback and their mobility because the game today is about mobility. So basically what you're saying is that the mobility of Patrick Mahomes makes up for the decided advantage that Pittsburgh has defensively over Kansas City. Fair enough. Okay. I recognize, <laughs> I recognize that they're not the same defense. But you know what, folks? As usual, you're focused on defense. I'll be focused on offense. What do you got defensively? Well, here's what I look at. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in this league. And I think he can do things. And he's shown us he can do things that no other quarterback can do. But I think when you look at in totality, offensively, defensively, special teams-wise, Pittsburgh came off playing their two toughest games of the season back-to-back -back, against Tennessee and against Baltimore. They went into the game yesterday at Dallas where all week long, everybody, all the players knew that the Cowboys couldn't beat them. They didn't show up with their best effort. It's pro football, but when they came out after halftime and Big Ben pulled his Willis Reed like he normally does, he comes back in the second half. He lets you know, too. Yeah, oh, he, will tell you, <laughs> he will tell you everything that's wrong with him, but you know what he does? He gets came it out done. And he performed and he got it done. And, and that's when you started to see them just mash the gas a little bit. And when they mash the gas, I still think they're the best team in the AFC. That no team plays its A game every week. Correct. There was an A game against Tennessee. There was an A game against the... Pitts, the Baltimore, Baltimore. Ravens, yep. you weren't going to get an A game against a quarterback who for the second straight week on a team was making his first ever NFL start with everybody saying how Both much. Both the Chiefs and the Steelers have done that. Figured out a way, Just not figured play out. great, yes. and win the game. That's the most impressive. When yeah. you don't play well and you still come out with a win. Yeah. That's what it's really all about. Lots more to get to from Sunday. And, of course, we will dive into the Week 9 finale from here at the Heineken River Deck at Pier 17. On a beautiful, balmy night at MetLife Stadium, there's Steve Belichick. We'll call him unofficial defensive coordinator. And Steve Business. Young assures us that the mullet is back. Like the it. mullet's back. Business in the front, baby. Party, party in the back. back. <laughs> That's a big party. That's a big party. And if it's Monday night, that means, come on, man. East Rutherford, New Jersey, for an AFC East rivalry with some interesting new twists. When the schedule came out, who expected Cam Newton and the Patriots facing Joe Flacco and the Jets in Week 9? First time since 2008, the Jets will face a Patriots quarterback other than Tom Brady. Former NFL MVP Cam Newton has shouldered much of the blame for the offensive struggles, but remains undeterred. A lot of intriguing angles break down with these two teams. Plus, we'll get you caught up on a complete Week 9 on Monday Night Countdown, presented by Subway. Counting down to kickoff from our set here in the Seaport District 
at Pier 17 in New York City. And it's great to have the whole gang here with us again this week. Booger McFarlane, our Hall of Famers, Steve Young, Randy Moss, Adam Schefter, I'm Susie Culver. So guys, how about we start with the shocking result in Tampa Bay. Then. In a battle for NFC South supremacy, the Saints steamrolled the Bucks. Drew Brees, armed with his full complement of weapons, ran off 38 straight points against what was the NFL's third-ranked defense. Meantime, the Saints' defense confounded Tom Brady to the tune of no touchdowns, three interceptions, and three sacks. You know, I, you definitely, when things don't go your way, you know, sometimes they just they keep going that way and you got to figure out how to stop it and then turn it around. And we had our opportunities and we just didn't do it. So we got to learn from it and, you know, hopefully we can learn from it and be better next week. So Mike is, Mike was open a bunch in that ball game. He just didn't, he didn't get targeted. That's all. He was open. He, Mike was, was open. Uh, shots being fired. <laughs> Steve, like it, he's it calling out like the goat. It. Susie, it seems like he's, the shots are being fired, but that's to me, that's planned. After week two, it felt planned when he had to screw up in the, in the Saints game back then. If Bruce Arians goes after Tom Brady, it's because Tom Brady and Bruce Arians have talked about it and said, look, I want to be held accountable. Because Tom, one thing about Tom, he's a genius at collecting the guys around him to play hard for him, even though he's multi-billionaire, married to Giselle, he's got all, these, all this stuff going on in his life, but he still gets the rookie lineman to go after him because he's ultimately accountable, and he tells them that. And by Bruce Arians going after him, and then Tom going, you're right, i got to play better, it sets that tone of accountability so the whole team goes, well, it's not just Tom's fault. It's my fault, too. And then you get 50 guys accountable. Tom knows what happens when you get 50 guys accountable. You play pretty good football. So that whole thing with Bruce Arians going after him, I think, is part of the plan. Well, but besides that, I mean, let's get to the heart, though, of what really is the problem. I mean, did we see this coming last week? They didn't score in the first half against the Giants for the fir first time all season. Are you seeing an actual problem with the offense? I have been seeing a, an actual problem. And let me take you through their first, the six games that they have won. The offense have been, have been playing outstanding. Tom has been throwing the ball everywhere. But, Susie, the three losses they have, one to the Bears, two to, to the New Orleans Saints, four sacks for that offense in their six wins, nine sacks in their three losses. So when you look at the quarterback play for the Tampa Bay Bucks, one thing that I'll say that I'm not used to seeing Tom doing that pocket is standing in one spot holding on to that ball. I like to see Tom move around in the pocket, slide to the left and right, and Bruce Arians did have a point. Mike Evans is our go-to guy in critical situations until A.B. gets a little football up under. Throw him the ball. So the frustration offensively from Bruce Arians in that offense, the frustration up front is collectively, like you said, it's collectively together. They all, um, they all failed uh, last night in New Orleans, but the offensive line play has to get better in critical games like that. You know, you talk about it being planned. I talk about it being reality. The reality of it is Tom Brady didn't play well. Yeah. And I, it, it bothers me a little bit when we're in 2020 and a guy's making $25 million a year, and when his boss, the head coach, says he didn't play well, it's calling him out. No, it's reality. It's true. He, he didn't play well. I no. think it works. And now, one of the reasons he didn't is because of what your point. The offensive line wasn't very good last night. Mm -hmm. And anytime, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Tom Brady. I don't care if you're Steve Young. I don't care if you're Joe Montana. If the offensive line doesn't play well, the quarterback is not going to play well. I don't care who you are. The kryptonite to Patrick Mahomes. He needs blocking. Everybody. Everybody needs, needs blocking. So when <laughs> Bruce, Especially 43-year-olds. Correct. So, so when Bruce Arians says Tom Brady didn't play well, I don't look at that as, as, as shots fired. It's reality. Even the greatest quarterback of all time can be called out by his head coach. You're telling me the offensive line didn't play well. You're telling me Tom Brady didn't play well. Let me give you a general rule. When you run the football an NFL record five mm. times mm. in a game, the offensive line is not going to look good. The quarterback <laughs> is not going to look good. Your team is going to get hammered and embarrassed the way the Buccaneers did, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah. They fell behind. They couldn't catch up. They abandoned the run. They started throwing the football. The Saints applied pressure. This is very simple. If you hand off the football five times in a game, you're <laughs> going to lose 100 times out of 100. And when you have a quarterback that's under duress, 19, would you say there's 19? There was 19 pressures that the Saints put on Tampa Bay's offense. How would you feel, Steve, as I mean, the quarterback, look, 19 pressures? At 43 years old, Tom can go run the 40, and it looks similar to what he did when he's 23, to be honest with you. He's, <laughs> he's not the fastest guy. 
guy in the world, but it doesn't look that different. When right. he throws the ball, it kind of looks the same. But when you're under duress at 43, that's when that shows up. He can't, no one at 43 can handle all of that pressure, let alone at 12, 33 or 23. <laughs> but and so you want to see the kryptonite for the Bucks? It's that dress for Tom Brady. And, and Randy makes the point about, I, we always think of Tom Brady as just that mo beautiful movement in the pocket. And if you're not seeing that. He needs that, a clean pocket, and, Susie. 